The Nazis entered this war. Would you look at that? Under the rather childish delusion that they were going guy? to bomb everybody else <laughs> and nobody was going to bomb them. Yeah, right outside my window. At uh, Rotterdam, awesome. in London, Warsaw, and half a hundred other places. Why is he here? They put that rather naive theory into operation. They like sowed the wind, and now Let's see if they are going away. to reap the whirlwind. Oh, okay. All right, I'm done with this. All right, we'll give it one more try. No? Okay, we're done. This is now an Arthur Harris video. Arthur Britt RAF Lit AF Harris. Arthur Bankrupting Fire Insurance Since 1945 Harris. Arthur Fire Up the Lancasters Harris. Arthur Holocaust Mark II Lancaster Boogaloo Harris. <laughs> but no, seriously, this video is about Dresden and how everybody gets it wrong. That cool man, that cool. This is normally how the story on Dresden goes. At the end of World War II, after years of strategic bombing by the Allies, the previously untouched city of Dresden was firebombed between February 13th and 15th, 1945 by the Royal Air Force. Being neither a military or industrial city, Dresden was destroyed, taking with it upwards of 100,000 German civilians in an attempt to teach them a lesson. And this is somewhat true. Yes, Dresden was utterly destroyed. This was achieved by bombers dropping first high explosive bombs from leading planes to blow holes in buildings to create debris, and then smaller fire bombs, containing an early version of napalm that would be dropped to create a large firestorm. And by firestorm, I really mean firestorm. Reports from the bombings in World War II describe hurricane force winds due to air rising as a result of the intense heat, creating a large air tunnel into the sky. And this would have two effects. One, literally sucking people down the street and into the inferno at times. And two, the fires consuming all the oxygen in the area, causing people to suffocate. And in fact, more people died to suffocation in Dresden than of burning. And we'll get back to that later. But it's at this point that the common narrative stated earlier separates from reality. First off, Dresden had been bombed before in a few minor raids. Definitely not to this extent, but it happened, as multiple armaments factories employing up to 50,000 workers were present in the greater Dresden area. Which brings me to the second point, that in 1945, Dresden was definitely a military target. Dresden was a key junction in Germany's railway system, with rail lines extending from the city in multiple directions. By the time it was bombed, Dresden was one of the final lines of supply for the Germans on the Eastern Front, namely what was left of Army Group's center and south, with thousands of soldiers passing through on rail lines every day. So this bombing was definitely strategic and was a great help to the Soviets in the East. But lastly, we get to the death toll. And for a more in-depth analysis of this, check out Three Arrows' video on the Dresden bombing. He sums it up better than I could ever hope to, but basically, the numbers from the death toll in Dresden have been inflated since the immediate days after the bombing happened. First, it was done by Reich Minister of Propaganda Joseph Goebbels, who invented many of the myths we already covered, of Dresden being a cultural city, not a military target. And he inflated the numbers to push the point that Germany had to fight to the end because the Allies were just going to kill everybody anyways and to provoke outrage amongst German citizens. After this, the number is skewed again in Kurt Vonnegut's book Slaughterhouse-Five. And interestingly enough, Vonnegut was present in Dresden as a POW and did see the destruction firsthand. But regardless, he draws wild conclusions about the total number of deaths that are not based in fact. And also, interestingly enough, he did apologize for Slaughterhouse 5 later, saying something along the lines of, I'm the only person to have profited from the Dresden bombing. And he felt really bad about it. But the biggest and most egregious of these inflations was claimed by the pseudo-historian David Irving in his book about Dresden, where he claims ridiculous numbers killed, up to like 300,000 or something crazy like that, and tries to liken German war crimes to what the Allies did here. By the way, David Irving is not a legitimate historian. There was a court case in 2000 that showed that he just made up a lot of his sources for many of his books, but I still to this day see a lot of people reference him in the comments and things like that. Don't cite him, he's not a legitimate source. The reality is, only 20 to 25,000 thousand people died in Dresden. Now I say only with large quotation marks because that is a lot of people, but it is only a fraction of what has been claimed in the year since. The number was actually found by a team of German historians commissioned by the city of Dresden itself in 2004 to figure out the actual death toll, given all the controversy around it. In 2009, they published their numbers and cited one of the biggest sources for their findings was the large number of death certificates issued at the time. These death certificates were able to be issued from the identified dead, ironically, because they had not been burned in the firestorm and had actually suffocated due to the previously mentioned phenomenon of oxygen deprivation from the intense flames of the firebombing. It's from from this relatively small number of burned or missing people, comparatively, that the 5,000 person margin of error comes from. 
So those are the myths and the facts. And I'm sure you're wondering, who cares? People get facts wrong all the time. And yes, people get facts wrong all the time. And it's usually not a big deal outside of them maybe looking dumb. But it's the application of the myths pertaining to this event that are a cause for concern. And the actual point of this video. But before we get into that, I would like to say that no, in general you should not bomb people, especially civilians. There are many examples of unjustified and criminal uses of tactical air power that killed a lot of innocent people, and a good number of them were carried out by the United States. But this bombing is not one of these and should not be used as a moral equivalent to the things the Axis powers did. And yes, some people make this argument. <coughs> this cunt. Yes, many civilians died as a result of Allied strategic bombing, and you could categorically probably call this a war crime. But you have to keep in mind that the Allied strategic bombing's main intent was to help the Allied war effort, whereas many of the Nazis' criminal activities hindered the German war effort. The Allies make a calculated decision that collateral damage was worth bringing down the industrial and logistical bases for the German army, with the end goal of taking the Nazi regime down in mind. The Nazis diverted manpower and material away from the war effort to kill civilians in the Holocaust to rid the world of people they viewed as inferior, a move that actively hurt the German war effort. The Allies' strategic bombing was a means to an end, whereas the Nazis were killing innocents behind the lines for no strategic purpose. And to say these two things are equivalent, I would argue is completely incorrect. You also have to keep in mind the fact that Germany started this war and in doing so, should have been willing to deal with any and all consequences associated with that. Germany mercilessly bombed Warsaw, Rotterdam, London, Norway, and Stalingrad, just to name a few, and has no right to call war crime when it's done back to them. Arthur Harris himself, I think, sums this up perfectly. They sowed the wind, and now they are going to reap the whirlwind. It's the same sort of scenario as people criticizing General Sherman for burning down Atlanta. Objectively, should it have happened? No. But objectively, war shouldn't happen, and the southern states started the war. And it's that old adage of, you reap what you sow, especially in a total war. And in the same way, Germany should not be surprised when its cities are flattened and its people are killed after beginning the conflict that led to it. So, all in all, I do not think there is any basis for moral equivalency between the two sides' actions. But I'm also curious what you think. Was Allied strategic bombing criminal? Was it a step too far, regardless of what the Germans were doing? Is Bomber Harris a bad guy, or is he just someone who was being practical and knew the war he was fighting? Let me know down below, and thank you for watching.